This week I painted the Tiger One from Bolt Action. This paint job is for Lewis, and thank you for another commission. Originally, he wanted the colour scheme to be as shown on the box with mud for weathering, but he changed his mind to this. So, I'll need to replicate the Tiger 131's desert camo. Fun fact, the Tiger 131 is the only operating Tiger 1 tank in the world right now. And check out this video on more about the tank, I found it really interesting. I'll leave a link in the cards and in the descriptions below. I received the tank assembled, but there were some problems with the bill. Looks like something is not quite right. After consulting with the instructions, it's clear that part 39 is missing, and unfortunately, it's nowhere to be found on the sprue, most likely a lost bit. And looks like another part is missing... But luckily, it's for the antenna, which is still on the sprue. So, I clip it out and dry fit it. There was an obvious seam line on the turret, so I give it a polish to make it flush. Once all the prep work is done, I prime the model. I start with priming everything white. A while back, I wanted a 0.2mm airbrush. Maybe I need to get a smaller nozzle for my airbrush, but I'm poor, so it'll be a while before that will happen. Well, I managed to refurbish Mark's airbrush. Thanks again, Mark. But it's not working perfectly, because I had to Frankenstein parts together. Since I would like to use a pre-shape, which would allow the base color to pop more, I'll give the new airbrush a test drive. I pick out the shadows with black primer. By picking out the recesses and hard edges, this helps to create gradients and adds more dimension. Since the airbrush isn't working perfectly, I tend to get unwanted sprays of paint on the model. But not to worry, it's pretty easy to fix if you act quickly. Just use a wet cotton bud to clean up the excess. Then I go back with a white to bring back some of the highlights because the shadows were looking a little too overpowering in some areas. Picking the base colors was a little difficult. I couldn't decide on which colors to pick because there were many similar shades to the references. Thankfully, the German colors paint set on the Vallejo website narrowed down the selection to ivory for the base and dark yellow for the camo pattern. Using the medium airbrush, I spray everything with ivory, making sure that my base coat is thin so that the pre-shade is still visible from the first layer. Then I use a fine airbrush to block in the camo pattern. I had to use multiple references to get an idea to do so, but it's just an approximation, a well-informed approximation. I paint in the rest of the details, gray for the miscellaneous tools on the chassis, tow cables, machine guns, and tank treads and black for the details on the wheels. I had to go back with an airbrush to clean up some black overspill, and getting a little overspray of ivory on the black is not a problem, because I'm going for that wetted look anyway. I shade in all the grey details with a black wash to give it more dimension. This is one of my favourite parts, applying water slide decals, and since this is my first time doing so in a video, I'll show you my process. Cut out the decals, Soak it in a bit of water until the glue reactivates. Using a pair of tweezers and cotton bud, position it into place. While the decal is wet, you can adjust it to your liking. Once you're happy with it, soak up the excess moisture with a cotton bud. Repeat the same process for the rest of the decals. The markings couldn't fit nicely due to the tow cables being in the way, so I had to cut the top off to fit it onto the tank. I then apply mark softener to help it conform to the surface. Then I apply a light coat of brown wash to bring out more of the details. I dry brush Elfit Flesh over the entire tank to give it a sandy weathered look. Stick on the antenna. Finally give it a matte varnish to seal on everything, especially the decals. Even though there were a few hiccups with the airbrush, I'm happy with the results. And as a first time user of a fine tip airbrush, the experience has been really positive. I'm just impressed by the amount of detail and control I can achieve with the airbrush. Overall, I think the tank turned out great. In case you didn't know, we have a Discord, 
so feel free to join the server, links in the description. Chill! Thank you for watching the video, and see you in the next one.